Philippians 2, and Philippians 2 is written by Paul, and Paul is currently in prison, and he's writing to the church of Philippi, and in this, I really wanted to focus on like verse 3 uh, and 4, which says, don't be selfish, don't try to impress others, be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves, don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. This is so important for our church and our students today because it is so easy to get caught up in worrying about what you look like and how you act and what our social media looks like and if it's presentable to others. And I think also in the era of technology, it's become so easy to get wrapped up in our own image and um, our own importance and how many followers we have and everything. But we really need to focus on that that's not the point of why we're here. That's not the reason for uh, living our lives day to day. And in here, that's, I know that's something that I personally struggle with for um, years and quite recently as well is I focus and I try to earn the affection and the approval of others. Uh, but ultimately, I've learned that that fails. It is not, um, it's not something that we can build our lives upon. It's not something that we can make our foundation because we will ultimately crumble if we put um, our identity in anything other than Christ. When we have Christ in our lives and in our hearts, we do not want to contain that. We do not want to keep it to ourselves like, like a treasure, but our treasures need to be shared with others because it, it pains me to see people that don't even know about the hope and love and grace of Christ that, that we know about. We have that eternal life, but there are so many others around the world that don't. And so just sharing our joy day to day is an important thing. And I know, I know it's hard to go about your day-to-day -day life and in school and in your clubs and communities and share the gospel. It is not a popular thing. People will hear the name of Jesus and be like, oh, like who are you talking about? He was just some great man of history. He wasn't the Messiah. He's just a prophet or something. There's so many lies that the world will tell you and that Satan will tell you, but the truth is that he is God and he is Savior. And once you accept him into your life, there's nothing more that you would rather do than to spread that hope and spread that that message to all of the world. And so I would just challenge you to go about your day and to go about your lives trying to um, go against the world. The world will hate you for it, but the world hated him as well, Jesus, when he walked this earth as well. And so I would challenge you to go about your day and to really, really dwell in the presence of God and know that he is with you and he is always for you. And you can live in peace knowing that um, he will always support you in sharing this wonderful word and this wonderful gospel. Alright, so in Philippians 2, there's two verses that stuck out to me like the most out of anything, and that's uh, Philippians 2, 14 and 15. Do all things without grumbling or disputing, that you may be blameless and innocent, children of God, without a blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation, among whom you shine the lights in the world. So I, I took that to me, like, this is a warning from Paul to people evangelizing in the world as to, like, not take their, their call to Christ with grumbling or complaining because that will just show the rest of the world how Christians may not act the, like how they're supposed to and that gives them a bad rap. So it's... Do all things without grumbling or disputing that you may be blameless and innocent. Like, give them no reason to blame you. Give them no reason to dispute you. Be kind to everybody. Um, you don't want to complain about the work you're trying to do for the Lord because that just, it's hypocritical. Because if you're, if you're trying to show outwardly love and compassion and yet you're complaining about the love and compassion that Christ has given you, that you are sharing to the world that is good. <laughs> so this is kind of like a, a warning and some advice from Paul saying that, you know, just do it with a smile on your face and joy in your heart. So. The way that I've kind of seen this play out in my life is usually on mission trips that we go on because 
They're usually high stress situations. We don't really know what we're doing at the exact moment. We're mostly winging it, especially like during Padre when we had to come up with our own stuff. We were like 100% winging it the entire time. It was so hard not to complain about what we were doing, but it just not complaining about it and just going with the flow and going with with God, what God put in your heart to do was just so much better than just worrying about what other people thought of you. Like the boys on the mission trip literally did yoga on the beach. Like if that's not worrying about what you're doing, like displaying that love to the world, I don't know what is because I I wouldn't have ever done that. Like I wouldn't have ever thought of that. But they just put themselves out there and uh, did it. So I mean, it's a lot more fun to spread the word of Christ through like not complaining about it because you're not worried about you're not self-conscious about doing anything. You're like having a good time, spreading the word of Christ, doing some good, and having a lot of fun. So. I mean, it makes it better for you when you're not thinking about it and you're not complaining and you're not grumbling. And it makes it better for him because it expands his kingdom. Miss Hayden, what does it look like for Jesus to be the light of your life? I think that it's awesome that he is always consistent even when you can't feel it. I've seen it in the hard times when I feel like he isn't there and then maybe like a little bit later in the day I'll realize that something has happened and that it was him all along. What's made the decision for you to make him the light of your life? Definitely because we all need him and if you gave up on him you wouldn't have anybody to really, you know, have your back as much as anybody else really could. I've definitely seen him be my light in my journey with cystic fibrosis. Mm -hmm. I've definitely seen him working and motivating me to get my stuff done so I can be healthy. Definitely just circling back to what I have in my life and being grateful for helps me find the motivation to, you know, try to find him and know that he's there. You know, Paul, he was like, he was like a warrior and he was in prison. And he's like, you know, it's all good because like I got Jesus and I got God. So it's like, it's good. It's all good. But, you know, I definitely just want to like spread his love because I knew if Paul could do it, then I can do it because everyone is warrior. If you're in a dark room, like, and there's no light, you can't see anything, and those two seconds before your eyes adjust, you can't see anything. You can see your hand in front of your face. But then when your eyes adjust, you can see and what I think of Jesus as is that adjustment he lets us have that adjustment to the world around us and he is the life that lets us guide and walk through our life because he is the adjustment without the eye adjustment we would not be able to see anything and we wouldn't be able to live our lives just in the pitch black but with that, we can see and we can walk through our lives knowing that Jesus has let us have that adjustment and He is the thing that lets us see. Um, it really first hit me that Jesus died for me last year actually. When I watched that video about Barabbas and like we are the Barabbas of the story, He is the one who saved us Barabbas. I always learned about it when I was younger, like in Sunday school, like, oh, Jesus died on the cross for me. That's cool. But I never really comprehended that he died for me. 
and he died because I have sins and I've done things wrong in my life that I regret. But he died so that we don't have to deal with that every day. We don't have to think about that every day. Um, something difficult about walking in the light of Jesus is that sometimes you trip and fall. <laughs> but the light always helps you get past that and just see the real like Jesus part of it. I'm the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. John 8, 12. What has been a difficult part about spreading the light? You know, it's hard because you want to make sure that you're saying the right stuff and you're giving the right advice. So people will believe you. Do you ever fear being judged by friends? Yes. I'm afraid that they won't like my life. You've got to believe that other people have the same feelings too. Like they're not always right and they're not really like, oh, well, I wonder if my shade is as good as everybody else's. Or I wonder if my light is as bright as everyone else's and you worry, but you have to believe that you're okay. If someone says something that hurts you, then you can respond with silence because, I mean, it's better than just fighting fire with fire. And instead of fighting fire with fire, fight fire with Jesus. With Jesus. When Jesus was on the cross, he was quiet. He, everybody was, like, roasting him and calling him mean names and spitting on him. But he didn't respond. He was silent because he was talking to his father, um, praying to him, and just listening to what he has to say instead of listening to all the negative thoughts that everybody else has to tell him. So it's saying, like, you can keep up with it because you've got Jesus. 